It's a rivalry in the Windy City. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Chicago Cubs. Only on 2K Sports. So tonight, a look around this stadium, 41,000 strong. From the National League Central, it's the Chicago Cubs taking on their arch rivals in town, the White Sox. Thank you for joining us. It's MLB Action on 2K Sports here in the middle of June. The starter, Ryan Dempster. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. Uh, his manager said... Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Last yesterday for the Cubs, and the focus for them reversing the trend of the first two, try and prevent the sweep against Chicago. On the way, grounder Lee, and he scoops it up, and he'll step on first for out number one. Here's how the Cubs stack up defensively. Any picks here, Steve? A Kosuke Fukudome is a guy who played a lot of center field in his career. Whether he's in center field or he's in the corners, he can make plays. He's not afraid of the wall. He's willing to go up and make the tough catch. One out, nobody on. Swing sends this one on the line to right center. Off the wall on a hop. And now he's batting. in at second Chicago with a double, 1-0. You talk about a happy guy right there, and so is his manager. Getting there to second base, two outs to work with now for his offense. Let's see if his teammates can bring him in. The pitch from Dempster. Now swinging and a shot toward second. And Canerco's got himself a single. Now Here's what's uh, next for the Cubs. We wrap up the Chicago series today. Schedules open tomorrow. They take on the division rival Athletics. Boy, have they been rolling. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. After that, they'll be playing host to the Angels and the bat of Bobby Abreu. Boy, there's some great competition in that set of games. So quite a few home games they'll be looking to capitalize. Swings puts this one in play, fielded by Bird. Ramirez around third, headed for the plate. And Ramirez is home. Solid approach at the plate. Did not try to do too much right there. Didn't think he had to swing it and hit out of the ballpark. Make contact and get a run in. Steve got a fly ball on that. Not easy to do in that pitch down where that was. Well, that's right. I mean, he went down and got it. He drove the ball and made an out, but at least allows the runner to advance. And Beckham's in the box. Well, they've done themselves quite a job here. This is a nice push at this point of the ball game to get out in front. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. And he'll step on first to retire the side. They come out strong, putting a run on the board early. The White Sox lead. And doing the pitching, it'll be Eric Bedard. He's going to start for Chicago. As he gets into this Cub lineup, Steve, what are we talking about strategy wise? Well, veteran left-hander Eric Bedard out on the mound. He's been hampered by injuries in recent past, but when he's healthy, he's productive. Quality, command of the fastball, outstanding breaking pitch, and a feel for the changeup. As a hitter, you have to be ready for all the different pitches. No balls, one strike. Here's Bedard. Strike two. Soriano, going to have to be careful here. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one, swung the bat well. Here's the delivery. Nice reflexes there to keep that one under control. That one was in the dirt. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out one down. Well, with two strikes on the hitter, he went with the heat. I tell you what, a fastball in the low 90s still very, very effective. And we've got Bird batting. He has a 286 batting average against Bedard. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. 
Streak continues. That gets in. And he pulls into first base with that base hit. There's one down here. But a good piece of hitting right there with one out. Now let's see what they can do with him now that they've got a man on first. And with a runner on, Derek Lee bats. National League batters generates a lot of runs in the top five. Bedard gets set and delivers. Catcher can't control it, and he's going to head for second. So they can't make the play. But Jerry's to make the error right there, you just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Frozen on the changeup, and it's one and two now. This is why changing speeds is so important for a pitcher. You get the hitter off balance, even more effective when it's down in the zone. Derek Lee not fooled by that one. The count goes even. He's ready. The 2-2 pitch. Swing and a foul straight back. And Lee fights off another during this A.B. Well, as a hitter, you try to do anything you can to prolong the at-bat to hope the pitcher makes a mistake. A nice job right there of fouling that 2-2 pitch off. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. And Aramis Ramirez stands in. Two down. Well hit towards the middle. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board of the single. And Bird's on his way home. And the run gets in. Well, you see the pitch down in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep the head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down in the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. And Giovanni Soto at the plate, runner on first. And this offense here, Steve, they put themselves in a pretty good position now, getting this ball game tied up. And that lead didn't last long as their bats came out swinging here early in this one, Gary. Swinging and connecting. You know, there's nothing like a little early action to get this crowd involved. Well, they keep the home crowd in it by responding early, getting themselves back in it, getting the fans on their feet. Swing and a miss. Soto not making contact there. That's going to even up the count. Now, coming into this game, he's got to have some confidence because he picked up two hits last time out. So... Got to be seeing the ball pretty well. And the one-two pitch from Bedard. He cannot get the bat off his shoulder. Giovanni Soto is out of there. So they score once on two hits. One man left. Even game here in Chicago. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rios. The pitch from Dempster. Slider swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Well, right there, you can just tell that the hitter was absolutely fooled on that pitch. Nothing you can do. You try to reach out and just put it in play, but he swung through it. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. That's going to bring up A.J. Pierzynski. Now let's take a moment to see how the Cubs are doing rank-wise in the National League. Second at ERA, second in home runs, and they're in the top ten in team batting average with runners in scoring position. That's a real asset for any team. When you get runners in scoring position, hit the clutch and drive them in. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Swing, a ball hit high, deep to left field, way back. Over the wall, goodbye, a two-run homer. Now oh, look at the chance of winning on our two-run homer, courtesy of our WPA Pepsi graph. Now, Gary looked like he was setting on that pitch. He got it and drove it out of the park. What they're going to want to do in this ball game now is take advantage of that and build that momentum up. Now, they need to still be aggressive out there and go right after him. Number 25. Well, that's what you want. Mark Run Fiend. support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. Swing and a long high drive left field way back there. Gone. That's a dinger. Putting a little padding on the lead. Solo shot up by three.
Well, they're really taking advantage of him right now, Gary. I mean, two at-bats and two home runs, and he clearly doesn't look comfortable out there. A little conference on the mound might not hurt here with either the catcher or pitching coach. Coming to White Sox well, lead expanded here, Sox. Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Hitter, number 27, Jim Tillman. No outs and nobody on. Swing and a miss. Tommy, strike one. Batting three for 13 lifetime off Ryan Dempster. And the 0-1 by Dempster. Tommy will foul that one away. Can't connect on that. Jim Tomei up empty on a swing. Here's the four seam fastball coming at you in K-Cam. Get a better look. And I think uh, last couple of pitches he faced, it, it didn't seem like he was ready for that fastball. Yeah, he got some off-speed pitch the previous pitch, but you should be able to expect to get the bat on that heater, especially with two strikes. And it's Johnny Damon at the plate. Right there in the top five in home runs. First pitch on the way to Damon. A swing line to left center. And another hit. They're really gunning right now. Here are the teams with the highest batting averages for this month, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Yankees, second. Third spot, the Red Sox. Fourth, the Angels. And number five, the Indians rounded out. Now some of the best hitting teams in baseball right there, teams that understand, put the ball in play. Don't try to do too much. Use what the pitcher gives you to pick up a base hit. And Dempster delivers the strike. He's up 0-2. Swing and a miss. Slider two down. His pitches complement one another. They work off of each other. And he used a tremendous sequence right there. One, two, three. Strike out. See you later. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's the league leader in ribbies. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. And he starts Canerco out. Swung on and ripped towards second. And that's the third out. That'll do it. But they strike for three runs here thanks to two home runs in the inning. The White. One of the most famous parks and a gorgeous day weather-wise here at Wrigley. Jeff Baker. Bedard gets set and delivers. He swings and nails a liner. Back I'm able to pull that one in. Number two. And it's Ryan Terrio in the box now. Nobody on base, one away. Here's Bedard with a 1-0 pitch. Terrio on a swing and a miss. That'll even up the count. Look out, and that ran in and got him. Well, the hitter just didn't get out of the way of the curveball. Hanging in there just in case it was a fastball, and it got a piece of it. And uh, that'll bring up uh, Michael Hoffbauer. Uh, Gary, we see that guy get hit with a pitch. I mean, sometimes, listen, as a pitcher, you just lose a grip on the ball. And it doesn't come out of your hand the right way. You end up hitting somebody. Ryan Terrio is a little catalyst on the bases. They better be careful. If they throw a breaking ball, look for him to go. Oh! We'll see Canerco holding him in there. Here's the pitch. Sharp bite to that slider, one and two. And the question after you've hit a batter like we've seen here, Steve, is as a pitcher getting your focus back. Yeah, but listen, it's only one runner on. Take a deep breath. Get you're yourself out. back and settle down a little bit. And make sure you're right. Able to set him down there. Chuck that one up as a strikeout for him. This one's right down the middle. He just swung and missed at it. Better check his bat for a hole. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. So they can't make the play. 
Well, listen, it's all about advancing base runners in the game. you got to make plays defensively, but that error cost him, and he came out of his hand wrong, and the ball sailed on him. A 1-0 pitch. And Fukudomi with a swing and a miss for a strike, and that'll even up the count. Now the 1-1. Waves at a fastball on that 1-1 pitch. Strike two. The 1-2 pitch. On the ground to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws to first side is retired. So they can't push any across here in this half of the inning. White Sox four. The Cubs one. And a chance to see one of the many expressions of Lou Pinelli. Bit of a hole he's watched his team dig so far, strategizing a comeback attempt right now. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Swung out and missed. Dempster getting it by him. Strike two. Now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Talking to the manager before the game, all he really wanted to say was what an offensive oh. game he had, driving in four runs in that last one. Now Soto sets the target. Strike three. Clinton on a swing and a miss. He's out. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. And Beckham's in the box. He's gone nine for 20 over his career against the Cubs. To the left side. That should be a base hit. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored. Top five. One out. Runner on at first. And he starts Rios out. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. This one to Bird. Roams over, puts it away. At the plate for the Chicago White Sox. Catcher. It's going to be Brzezinski. He homered earlier in the ballgame. Well, uh, complete game here for him. I mean, you talk about the RBIs, the homers. I mean, this guy's doing everything today. Runner on first, two away. The pitch from Dempster. Swing and a drive, deep left center. This one to Soriano. And there's the third out. So Ryan Dempster out of the inning. Four. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crunk bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Soriano. And Alfonso Soriano to bat. He gets across the plate. He leads the entire division and runs. Oh. Ugly pitch. Catcher able to somehow scoop that out. Good spot that time. Hit that outside corner. One and two. Bedard gets set and delivers. Good patience. Soriano lets that one go by for a ball. Count is even. Ground ball towards the second baseman. Over to Canerco. One down. And we've got Bird batting. Bird. One out, faces him. And the first pitch. On the ground to third. Tian. Two away. That one looked like he nearly keeled over Number trying to make that throw. Now, any throw, the key part of it is footwork, and he had good footwork right there. And that's a major league play right there. Now, with two outs, chance for Derek Lee. Called out on strikes in his last appearance. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. And he'll step on first to retire the side. Not a lot of action in this half inning. A look at the manager, Anzi Guillen. 
He has to be pleased with the position he's in now. Offense is cooking. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. Good pitch from Dempster. Swung on and missed. But Gary, they're going to have to watch the slider. I mean, that is his put away pitch right here. So you've got to be able to guard against the break on that pitch. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Look, Gary, I mean, the other reason this guy's slider is so good, other than the movement on it, is the fact that he can throw it where he wants. He starts it on the corner and breaks it off the plate. So, Jim, tell me, coming up, our State Farm leaderboard, the teams who have found power during this last month. The White Sox, number one. Second, the Yankees. Third spot, the Rangers. Fourth, the Angels. And it's the Red Sox, number five. With this sort of power, these teams have the ability to score runs in ways different than other teams because they're in scoring position when they stand at home plate because of that ability to hit it out of the ballpark. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got him at 0-1 right now. His lifetime average, 288 against the Cubs. And there's one. And they get it. They turn two. He made that throw from first to short, then got back to cover the bag. Nice play. Uh, great all-around play there, Gary. It's the accuracy of the throws that was absolutely critical. It's Damon at the plate. What a year for him. Top five in homers. And the first pitch. Covers this ball. A soaring drive deep left center field. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here. Four up. Now White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Two outs and nobody on. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swings and misses the slider, 0-1. And Steve, you give up that big fly ball, now trailing further in this one. Pitching's got to find a way to shoot. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws to first in time, that's three down. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. The White Sox, four-run lead. And here's Aramis Ramirez. Single home run in his last at bat. First pitch on the way. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Pitchers that have a curveball like this guy have great success at the major league level because you don't have to throw it for a strike. As long as you're ahead in the count, it's a pitch that the hitter will chase out of the zone. Back up. And so Ramirez retired. And in this case, with that great curveball, this is actually the out pitch for him. Well, exactly. As long as he's ahead, he can get a strikeout with it. First one to Soto. Here's the pitch. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. And that sets down Soto. Two men have been put away. It's Baker at the plate. I don't know if you got a chance to see his last ball game, but he picked up two hits in that one, swung the bat well. Fastball just misses, 1 and 0. Here's Bedard with a 1 0 pitch. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And he'll step on first to retire the side. And they aren't able to get anything going in this half inning. Three up, three away. Fifth inning coming up at Wrigley. A glimpse there, Lou Pinello. He's trying to hide the disappointment right now and also thinking about a way to get back into the ball game. And Paul Kodarko to lead it off. Well, leading the league in home runs. And he starts Kodarko out. Good pitch from Dempster. Swung on and missed. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. And he's out in front on that pitch, so he's in the hole now, 0-2. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider 
in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Swing and a miss on the slider. One up. Well, a great job getting an 0-2. That third pitch, unhittable. Guess he figured why waste the pitch, save the arm. He did. Nice job. First pitch. Good pitch from Dempster. Swung on and missed. Well, a great pitch and a great strike right there to get that pitch down and away. Look, if you can throw it out there consistently, you keep doing it, you're going to have a lot of success. The pitch. Slider swung out and missed. Two down. Here's the slider coming right at you in K Camp. Get a better look at that. And Beckham's in the box. He singled in his last at bat. Now the first pitch. Swung on. Hit down the line and left. It has a chance. Gone. A home run. Add one more to that lead. Solo. Big fly ball up by five. White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. Center fielder, number 51. Two out, space is empty. And he starts Rios out. There's a swing, line drive, center field. And in there, he's two for three today. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. And here are the standings in the Central Division. As found AJ on our Krasinski. State Farm standing board, plenty of time still left in this season. First place, the Cubs. The Reds, second place. The Brewers, third place. Cardinals in the fourth spot. The Pirates, fifth. And wrapping up the list, the Astros. Well, the Cubs came into this season without a chance to surprise anybody. They were expected to lead this division, and to their credit, they're getting it done. Good pitch from Dempster. Swung on and missed. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. It's off the ivy. He throws, and is Rios heading home. And he crosses the plate all the way from first base. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. It'll be Joe Bimel doing the pitching as they make the pitching swap. Well, they had to go to the bullpen much earlier than they anticipated, but the starter wasn't getting it done, and you can't let this game get away from you. Up the middle. Terrific dive. Terrio. From his knees, he got him. What a play. And they add a couple more runs here and extend their lead even further. White Sox continue to run away with this ball. It's Ryan Terrio to lead us off. Number two, Ryan Terrio. Bedard gets set and delivers. Ball. Curveball just misses 1-0. Oh. The best curveballs are the ones that start in the strike zone, then fall out of the strike zone. He couldn't get him to fish for that one, though. One. Take it for a called strike. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in for a strike. Curveball just off the black, and it's doing one. 2 1 pitch. On the ground to second. And that'll retire Terrio. And Huff Power batting. He's 0 for 5, lifetime off the White Sox. Now Przinski sets up. The 0-0 delivery, a fastball taken for a strike. No balls, one strike. Here's Bedard. Swing and a miss. He's behind 0-2. Well, the pitcher has him right where he wants him, on the defensive. He could try to throw it out of the zone and get him to chase. This one's foul. grounded near third. Foul.
swing and a soft liner up the middle. And it's caught by Ramirez. He's retired 10 in a row. The hitters are completely overmatched right now. He's got it all going on. Here's the first pitch to Fukudomi. Swing and that's going to be hit behind the plate. Bedard gets set and delivers. In there and he falls behind 0 and 2. The hitter now needs to protect the plate. Think about going right back up the middle. Get Fastball out. called. Strike three in the side is retired. And they are retired in short order. Good defensive half inning. The White Sox still ahead. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crock, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Jim Tomei to lead it off. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Swinging and a miss. And he falls behind on the count 0 1. The pitch. Bimel delivers the strike. Now 0 and 2. Tomei will foul that one away. A swing and a miss, strike three, but a chance at first. And out, the catcher makes the play. Oh, that's a great play, Gary. Pitch in the dirt, gets away from the catcher, does a great job retrieving the ball and gunning him out at first. If you're a pitcher, you never want those strikeouts not to get recorded. Good play to be able to get the out at first base. First pitch on the way to Damon. And that's by him 0-1. Well, the two-seamer has his timing way off. He swung and missed. Swung way too Over early. Two. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though. He'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. This is hot shot towards the hole. And he steps on first. That's the second out. And a shot Alexi. here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. One of the best batting averages in the league. Here's the delivery. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0-1. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary. Really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. That misses at the shins. One and two. Well, two outs now. At least trying to quiet down this offense because they have been relentless today. And you got to keep runners off base. They're doing it this inning. Fastball swung on and missed. Side retired. Good defensive half inning there. No hits allowed. White Sox seven, the Cubs one. And here's Alfonso Soriano. In the National League top five in hits. Alfonso Soriano. Here's the pitch to Soriano. That one gets passed, but no damage done. And Soriano with a swing and a miss for a strike. The count evens up. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. Over to Canerco. One away. Well, these hitters are just lost up there right now. I mean, they have to think about changing their approach. Be 12 hitters in a row retired. At some point, you lay down a bunt or you try to go the other way. You got to try something. Here's the first pitch. This one swung on line softly to third. And that'll put Bird on first. That will bring Derek Lee up. And here are the standings in the Central Division, as found on our State Farm standing board. Plenty of time still left in this season. It's the White Sox in first, Twins in the second spot, third, the Royals, the Tigers fourth place, and down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. The uh, Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. Oh. Catcher can't control it. So they can't make the play. But Gary's to make the error right there. You just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Now the 1-1 pitch. Hit hard to second. He is safe at third base ahead of that play. Fantastic chance here. Number 16, 
Well, sometimes the pitcher can do everything he can to record an out. He put this pitch right where he wanted it. The batter very lucky just to get a piece of the bat on the ball, but he's able with the speed to beat it out. And it's Aramis Ramirez in the box now. Solid batting average, lifetime, 341 off the white side. That one's too low, Bedard missing. As you can see, a bit out of control. He hit that batter. Now the ball just sailed away from him, couldn't control it, and now it loads the bases. So up next, Giovanni Soto. Well, he's got an opportunity here. He can be a hero. You get a next swings and hits this one. Gonna be fielded by Rios. And Bird's on his way home. Now we take a moment to look at the pitching staffs allowing the fewest free passes this month. Brought to you by State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Royals in second. In third, the Tigers. Rangers fourth. And the Mariners fifth. We take a look at these teams. These are the teams that believe that their defense can make plays behind them. They're not worried about getting the strike out and trying to do it by themselves. They trust their teammates. That one's too low. Bedard missing. Wide fastball right there. Just missed. Just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think there's a swing and a line drive. That looks like a single. And Bird comes in to score. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Now this one's coming to the inside part of the plate, but he manages to put the bat on the ball and drive it to right field. We call that a muscle hit, Steve. He just muscled that to the opposite field. Now how do you swings? Hits this one in the air down the right field line. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up, and they score him. And Ramirez scores too. Boy, the Cubs are riding it along right now. They're making it happen. Well, this is a big at bat coming right now in a critical situation. And an offense here that's going in the right direction. They've got time to put this ball game away. First, you got to get back in it. Uh, we just saw a good piece of hitting right there. I mean, down as many runs as they were, he sent a message to the pitcher and to his teammates. They're just not going to go down without a fight. Bedard gets set and delivers. You're out. Got him. And they're able to avert any more damage. Side retired. So they scratch across three runs on three hits. Two left on base. The Cubs will try to hold and continue to chip away. None other than Ozzy. That's Ozzy Guillen. He's not happy with his club. Uh, still out in front, but he knows they cannot afford to have innings like that and still win. Pitch on the way. Flied to right. And in there, second hit for him in the ball game on his fourth plate appearance. Well, a good start to this inning, but let's see if the guys behind him, after he starts out this inning with the single, can follow up and finish this inning off with some runs. Here's Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. That's swung on and a liner here. And Quinton's got himself a base hit. Now breaking now, down Carlos Quentin's season so far. Let's see how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average. First in hits. And he's also first in on-base percentage. That knack of getting on base better than anybody else. He can spoil a pitcher's pitch, work the count. He knows the strike zone extremely well. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. He deals. Hit sharply towards the hole. Now we talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. It's Alex Rios. And he'll be hacking right here, Steve, with the sacks full. And he could pretty much put this game out of reach with a big hit. Here's the delivery. Hit in the air. No, that is a foul ball. And it's hit well off the bat of Rios. This one to Bird. 
That's one away. Oh, it's fair now, to say, Gary, they plate. needed that out badly. Now he's got to come right back at them and get another AJ one. They're down. They cannot give up more runs here this late in the game. Bases are loaded here with only one away. Here's the first pitch. Grounder, Lee. Out at the plate. And two, double play. Seven pitches and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. Hi, everybody, and it's stretch time at Wrigley. End of the order is going to try and kick it off offensively. And it's Kosuke Fugadomi at the plate. He's going to get things going here. Home half, seventh inning. Kosuke Fugadomi! Here's the first pitch to Fukudomi. And he watches the outside pitch from Bedard for a ball. Oh, nine outs to go right now and, and leading by three. I mean, I think you have to start throwing strikes. Just go at the hitters, force them to put in play. Do not give them free passes. Good pitch on the outside corner, one and two. He's just popping that glove with that four-seam fastball, pounding the strike zone. The one two on its way. Good patience there and a good eye. Fukudomi letting that one go by for a ball to even the count up. Well, that's just some good old country hardball right there. Four seam fastball up in the zone. Now Przinski sets up. Fastball swung out and missed. Struck him out one away. It took only six pitches to get it done here late in the game. Well, you hate to strike out any time in the game, but especially late. You want to put the ball in play and try to make something happen. Couldn't get it done there. Here's the pitch to Soriano. Hit up the middle. And it gets through. There is his first base hit of this ball game. It has been a tough day offensively. You can smile a little now. But well, you're going to have to keep a close eye on this guy at first base. Pay a lot of attention to him because you know he more than likely has the green light. He can go at any time. And we've got Bird batting. Two for three thus far. Swing and a bouncer up the middle. The second, there's one. And the deuce, a double play. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. The White Sox still ahead. And if you were just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Here's the pitch to left center. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. Now batting. Oh, with Chicago that big hit right there, he only the needs a triple to complete 20. the cycle. But hey, that's the toughest one to get. Let's see if he can do it. The first pitch. He swings and it's this one's going to be fielded by Fukudomi. This one to Soriano. He comes up with it easily here. And he can't quite get back in time. He is out at second base. But Gary, we talk a lot about how important defense is to a team's success. That's living proof right there. And you keep this one in mind because it's an inning offensively that didn't happen. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swung and a fly ball. And it goes foul. No luck on that one. There is a swing and a liner. And it gets down. That's hit number three on the ball game and five at bats. Now Here's a look at the teams that have gone the extra distance, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. In third, the Yankees. The Angels fourth. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. 
You've got to keep the opponent close when you're behind. You've got speed on first base. They better keep him close. But if he gets in scoring position, it may just add on to this lead. It'll be Lee's job to keep him close. The pitch. Ramirez will foul that one away. Hard grounded a short. Picked up by Terrio. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. And uh, here come the Cubs. This is baseball's familiar faces, including that of Lou Pinello. And some good pitching last inning. He now hopes to get the necessary offense going, get him going in the right direction. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Obviously getting late right now, Gary, and I think that from the pitching perspective, you'll trade an out for a run at this stage of the game, understanding that for every out you get, you're closer to winning. Still 0 and 2. Well hit towards the middle, and it's through Lee at first base. Fielded by Ramirez. Well, that pitch down and away is the toughest in the game to hit. It's a perfect pitch from the pitcher. Great piece of hitting. And keep that in mind next time around. We'll see whether or not he changes up and how he throws to this guy. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. He looked like he was looking for a pitch out over the plate. That fastball down and in locked him up a little bit. He got him so far. Eight strikeouts today. 81 miles per hour and a big old break. Well, sometimes you get fooled so badly, there's just nothing else you can do but hope and pray that you put the ball in play, hopefully foul, to get another pitch to hit. So Giovanni Soto is batting. Takes that first pitch low in the strike zone. Strike one. Now trailing right now down three runs. You got one out here in the eighth. You got five outs left is the way you have to look at it. They need base runners. Swung on and a grounder to first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. And a chance to check out the schedule for the White Sox. This game, the last against the Cubs. Nothing scheduled for them tomorrow. They head to yet another venue, the Pirates at PNC Park. That'll be a three-game series. Then they have yet another venue, the Nationals hosting that one. And quite a bit of time away from home for, for them over these next several games. And he misses high, but Dard can't get him to go after it. Now listen, this is still doable from the offensive perspective, Gary. They're only down three. It would be nice to have a little two-out rally right here, pick up some runs, narrow this three-run deficit. But understand, you can still come back and finish in the ninth. Just don't wait till the ninth. Curve misses badly with it, and it goes 3-0. and That's not a spot where he wants to throw that pitch. It's danger right there if it's left out over the plate. He's got to bury that into the dirt. He's ready. The 3 1. This is popped down the right field line. Should be room. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. And on a full count, that ball swung on, hit Rios to field it. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. They pick up no run. And it's Paul Canerco now. First baseman, number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Swings and misses at the fastball, 0-1. He says, I'm going to go at him, but I'm going to go at him away so that I can't get hurt. Oh. He just runs that fastball by him. That one's on the ground, but he gets it in front of him. Swing and a ball hit high in the air. Deep right field. Goodbye home run. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here. Four up. We've seen this guy do this in batting practice, but to translate it into a game situation, 
that's talent. Now, I guarantee you after this game, they'll have the tape measure out just to make sure how far this one was really hit. He just obliterated that ball. For the Chicago White, White Sox, Sox lead expanded right here. Field Gary, field they field just field keep getting big hits. Carlos Quinton. Here's the pitch. He gets Quinton to swing. Strike one. Well, Steve, they came into this building looking for a win, and uh, when you can extend that lead, top of the ninth inning, you're in pretty good shape. That uh, makes such a big difference. That late inning momentum going a long way in this situation. You got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Well, that's what you love to see from a pitcher setting guys down quickly. Keeps that pitch count down. One, two, three. Can't pass for any more efficiency than that, John. No, an excellent pitch selection there. There's a swing and a line drive. And that gets through for a base hit. So that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Flew out last time. One out man on first. And he starts Rios out. Swung on liner to right. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. Coming Tremendous back. situation the now for the White Sox. Sox. Number 12. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? It's going to be Przinsky. Had a couple of hits, four trips to the plate. One out with runners at first and second. And the first pitch. It's 0 and 1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, I fooled him right there. That two seam fastball has to be down in the zone to be effective, but it looked like he was looking for a different pitch. And A.J. Przinsky strikes out, unable to make contact on that pitch. A good sequence of pitches right there using location and selection to get the strikeout. We got Sean Marshall out on the mound. He's been chosen to take over out there. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, you talk about a guy right here, Sean Marshall, that he can be a fifth starter, a spot starter, probably more suited to be in the bullpen. With that height, six foot seven, left-handed hitters don't get to see that many tall left-handed pitchers, so he could be deceiving for the left-handed hitters. Probably best suited to be a situational lefty coming out of the pen. Let's see how he does here today. That's good. That one swung on its line. And that gets in there. Tomei a base hit. A run scores. Situations repeating themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. Johnny Damon. Well, that big lead just got a little bit bigger, and I have to think this one's just about over. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI, and he'll be hacking right here, Steve, with the sacks full. And he can pretty much put this game out of reach with a big hit. Slider swung on and missed. 0 oh and 1. Only one career at bat. That's a 1 off John Grable. Strike 2. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, will cut it down and try to just poke it out there. But once you make the decision to swing, you have got to swing the bat. He waited a little too long. He wanted to swing a little earlier. His indecisiveness, though, called him to swing late and miss it. Making a count of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. And out on the mound, we've got Scott Linebrink. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, it's about time. I mean, I don't know what they weren't seeing from the dugout. They should have gotten out of this game a lot earlier. Terrio lays off it. It's a strike. I think right now, offensively, you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. Swing and a ball line softly towards second. I come able to pull that one. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground. And, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb. And running out of time right now, only two outs remaining. So they've got to get something going and keep it going. Hot shot towards the hole. Two down here in the inning. Chicago Center fielder. Number one. And it's Kosuke Fugadomi at the plate. He's 0 for 1 off line brink. Here's the first pitch to Fukudomi. Called strike from line brink. Count now goes to 0 and 1. 
Oh, that's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put that one in play. And that one is a fly ball. This could do it. And you just saw it, folks. That's going to be the last play of this game. A good all-around effort, Gary, by the White Sox today allows them to get the win. They've got to be feeling pretty good about themselves. Now we'll look at our Pepsi Clutch performer, our stand-up performance deserving of recognition. But you know, Gary, there's no way you can win baseball games without great starting pitching. And he came through in this one with the most important performance of the game. And that's basically the definition of what it takes to be the Pepsi Clutch performer of the game. And you don't often get the bats going on the road quite like this. Pretty good offensive attack. Well, when you're on the road, to have this kind of offense, it takes the hometown crowd out of the game and really helps your chances. And that's going to do it for us here. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Take care.